everyone, welcome to the Jones and Four show. Today we have an amazing show for you. We are so lucky and blessed to have a special guest joining us. We have Doug Fitzgerald, author of One Shot, One Life, the book that is there to help you chase your passions to the max, live your best life, and gives you the the road, right? The the roadmap essentially to help you do this. So we're, uh, I'm excited to have him here. He's inspired me. I've known him for the past couple years and through Beachbody, through Fitness Life, through his new book and talking with him uh, about business and life and how to chase my passions and how to do it balanced. Uh, so we're we are. I'm excited to have him here. I know you'll be excited to have him once you hear the interview. So, Doug, welcome to the Jones and Four Show. Spencer, this is great. I am so excited. So, this is, and hopefully, you know, I can add some value to your listeners and I uh, look forward to just spending this time with you all. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm so excited to have you. It's been, it's been a couple of years uh, since we've known each other, as I mentioned, and and you've inspired me so much. I, I couldn't wait to get you on the show and inspire my audience and help them live their best life. So well, let's just jump into it real quick. So you, you wrote a book of a year and a half ago or so, you released about a year and a half ago called One Shot, One Life. Um, just give us a little uh, synopsis about it. Like why, what's the book about? Well, One Shot, One Life, what, you know, what, we, what we like to do is help people stop worrying about the things of life and start winning at life. And we know right. that uh, people are struggling out there with uh, real issues that are vital to achieve. And um, a lot of times we struggle with those things and don't do anything about it. And it never gets any better. And then we have people also that, you know, myself included, where you have these hopes and dreams deep down in your heart. And then you've never taken the step or maybe you've taken a step to try to achieve that. And maybe it just didn't work out the way you wanted it to. So what we did with One Shot, One Life is uh, I wrote this book. It was about four or five years ago when I started the process of actually writing the book. And let me kind of tell you a little backstory of that. I hired a business coach. I've been very successful in business for years. I was, um, you know, I was in radio for a long time and then I was a pastor for a long time. And then God brought this company called Beachbody in our lives. And that just kind of, you know, it was, it was awesome time of growth and development, which we're still doing. Um, but I'm fortunate enough to have, um, the freedom of time and income to say, all right, what do I want to do with the rest of my life? Uh, and so about five, six years ago, I hired a business coach and she kind of walked me through, all right, what have you done throughout your life that has really um, kind of been that, that thread that's been common throughout the entire life? And so for me, it was always encouraging people and help people to live their best life, right? To, to take that step of faith. A good friend of mine, her name is Tracy. Tracy always says that I push people off the cliff, right? Like they've got these dreams or these passions or things that they know they should do. Um, but then for some reason they're holding back. So I kind of give people a good healthy shove and help them get to that level where they know they need to be. And so uh, my coach, you know, was saying, all right, we need to develop a website around this and look at these principles that I've been teaching for decades. Um, right. We call them the ultimate success formula now, but it's five powerful principles to help people stop worrying and start winning. We can talk about those later. But um, she says, all right, why don't you put those five principles in a PDF form We'll make it an opt-in on your website. Nice. And you can start getting some email emails coming in and making contacts with people. I'm like, that's great. So I started working on this PDF and finally I stopped. I was getting frustrated. And I mm -hmm. just said, Joy, my business coach, I said, this is not a PDF. This is a book. I mean, I could try to write down, but it's not, you know, I, and she's like, all right, start writing the book. And so um, that's kind of where the seed that was planted to get this book done and where it came from. And at the same time that she was challenging me to write the book, then uh, we can get into this a little bit later. She said, all right, to get started on really the focus of who you want to reach out to, I want you to contact some key people in your life and ask them this one question. What do you worry about that keeps you up at night? Hmm. And so I, 92 people, I put this in my book, 92 people I reached out to, good friends and colleagues. And nearly everybody got back to me with really in-depth answers, which I was honored to receive from them. And we took that information, compiled it. And here's what they worried about. Money, in, in the order, top worry, money, people or relationships, mm -hmm. faith, work and career, health and fitness, 
And the sixth one was sex, which is a, which is a, a good worry, right? I right. guess we, Definitely. That, we, we, that falls within relationships. Okay. Um, but then the final one that we deal with is helping people with their hopes and dreams. Right. And so when we compiled all that information, we took our principles. I took all my life experiences over the last 50 years. Can't believe I can say I'm 50. 50 <laughs> years of great mentorship, learning, um, great insight from people that I have been mentored by. Uh, and compiled that, put it in the book, and um, and then uh, we were going to put it out as a as a digital uh, uh, copy book. And I told Joy, my business manager, I said I want a physical copy because people need to work through this. We got worksheets and we got action steps. And I, this isn't a book just to read; it's a book to implement for the rest of your life. Exactly. And she's like, "All right, let me contact uh, a c- connection I have at a publisher, and we'll we'll see where it goes." Within a few weeks, I mean, Spencer was the craziest thing. Within a few weeks. Um, God had brought us to Morgan James Publishing. They offered me a contract. They offered 200 offers to write books a year out of over 6,000 entries. Wow. And it just happened to be the right thing at the right time. And I believe it was a God thing. And um, we launched it on September 18th of 2018. And so here we are today. We're building a business platform off of one shot, uh, developing mastermind groups and online courses and a lot of other things. So long story to how the whole book got going. So. It, it's incredible, though, uh, how life is a journey. And I've talked about this on the podcast and, uh, and on my website and on social media before that life is a journey and, and you're constantly going on it and you're never, you can help direct where it goes, but things can surprise you and come up. And it's amazing how God or, or whatever you believe in coincidences, which I, I personally don't believe in coincidence. I think that it's all a matter of of life, of the universe coming at you, of God helping you out, right? And so the fact that you had that book offer your coach, first of all, that you're able to have that time in your life to have that coach to help guide you, and then uh, encouragement to write this PDF that then turned into a book, then a publisher, right? It all starts working together. (laughs) And it's incredible that happened to you, but as much as, as awesome as it is that it happened to you, it happens to me and it happens to you, the person listening and watching this or reading this, right? That you can have those experiences. You can have those, the, the being blessed by God that all of a sudden this happens in your life or oh, this coincidence happens or whatever you want to call it, um, that you can have these experiences. You just have to be open for it and be willing to see it and accept it when it comes and, and deal with it appropriately and, and accept it appropriately. Um, whatever works for you best in your life at that time. Yep. So it's cool to see how it, how it worked for you in this aspect of your life on the business uh, side of Doug. And it's just really cool. Well, you know, and the key to that, and that's just once you bring up a great point is, and first of all, I'm not, I'm not here to push my faith on anybody. It's just who I am. It's part of my story. I'll share it. Um, and, uh, but I don't, you know, it's not here to push it on anybody, uh, but it's the core of who I am, Mm -hmm. but you bring up a great point. Uh, life is a series of opportunities. If you put yourself in a situation to allow them to happen. And what I mean by that is this, a lot of people, I always tell people, you know, um, a lot of people want what successful people have, right? Most people are not willing to do what successful people do to get it. And one of the key things in that is simply putting yourself in opportunities and situations that you're not necessarily comfortable with to see where they, where they, where they fall. I got into radio when I was 16 years old because we had a brand new radio station come into town. Mm -hmm. And I told my mom and dad, I've always had a dream. I always tell my kids that Ryan Seacrest has my job because (laughs) that's what I wanted to do. He has my job literally. Uh, But my mom and dad said, just go down the radio station and apply. I did got the job. Now, if I wouldn't have taken the step to go apply, I wouldn't have had it. That opened up a ton of doors. I worked for several different radio stations. But let's fast forward to even working with Joy, my business coach. You know where that came from? I went to a uh, speaking conference that I'd always wanted to go to for years. Mm -hmm. It cost a lot of money, which was a sacrifice for me. But I made a commitment at some point that I was going to do it. I don't go to things by myself. Like I don't go to conferences by myself unless I'm part of it or with somebody else. That was one of the very first times I went out by myself to a conference to Colorado. I'm from Nebraska and uh, experienced this weekend with these strangers. Well, one of those strangers was Joy, who ended up being my business coach. And that led to some guidance and mentorship along the way. That's just one of these little stories. But the point of that is putting yourself in situations that allow these connections to start to be made. A lot of people will just sit back 
and never, never take a chance. And I think the moment where you don't take a chance is where you lose the potential of your dreams coming true and you where have, you're trying to go. Yeah, you have to be willing to, to take that leap of faith, to get outside your comfort zone. While being in your comfort zone is great and it's okay at times, if you want to grow as a person, if you want to grow your business or whatever, you're going to have to step outside your comfort zone. Yep. Now, that doesn't mean like go crazy and, you know, mortgage a house or, or do something mm. totally outrageous without planning for it. But it means taking that step outside of your comfort zone to try something new, to put yourself in that new position. Uh, for You just said the example of you going to that conference by yourself. It's scary. And uh, for everyone listening, and, and you know this, Doug, about me, that I'm a, I'm a super hyper guy. I'm highly energetic. And while I don't mind going to things by myself, usually when I do, especially at, at conferences or, or things like that, I clam up and I keep to myself the entire <laughs> time. I, I'll watch it. And I'll do like when I go to the Beachbody Summits, their big corporate get togethers once a year. And they have these workouts, like I'll be busting the workouts and it's, it's awesome. I'm having a blast. But besides that, mm, I'm climbed up by myself until I'm around a group of friends, uh, of people that I know um, through fitness groups or other things or, and we meet up. And that was me the past two years at Beachbody. I might've met up with a couple friends here, there, but other than that, I kept to myself. Then this past year at the conference or at the summit, um, I knew some more people. I brought one of my friends with me, and then I intentionally told myself, like, nope, I'm going to step outside my comfort zone, which is weird for me because I wouldn't think it would be even a, a barrier for me, but it is, of okay. going and talking with people and being like, nope, I'm going to introduce myself to this person, random person here. I'm going to walk into this room and be, I'm always friendly, but, you know, be just, I don't know, introduce myself and talk with them and, and be questioned. Same thing like when I ride an airplane. I'm one of those annoying people at first who will be like, hey, what do you do? Oh, this is cool. And just talk a little <laughs> bit. And then if you're done, then cool, we're done, right? I won't annoy you, but uh, I want to get outside there. And this last summit was incredible. We created this amazing group of friends because of that. Yeah, we knew a little bit from each other from social media, but it was still getting out of my comfort zone. Like, oh yeah, seeing them, I should probably go say hi. And then that changed my complete experience of Summit and doing that, uh, of that whole thing. I look back on it and we're, we're such good friends now um, between that group. And who knows where that'll lead in the future. So if the people listening, if you are want to grow as a person, if you want to get more out of life, step outside your comfort zone, right? Take that leap of faith, take that small step. It doesn't have to be anything grand or crazy, but take that small step of faith and get outside your comfort zone. You, you won't regret it. I mean, there's, you'll learn from it at most, you know, something happens, take it, learn from it and grow and keep trying, keep pushing, keep stepping out. So absolutely. And that's how we met. You came to Lincoln, Nebraska. Remember that by yourself? That's how we met in person. Yeah. And that's so you know, and that relationship that started and it, yeah, it's a crazy story for, for that one. Um, we he put on a training for a beach body business he was in and, and I am in and this training, I'm like, okay, I have some kayak fishing friends out there. Although it's the dead of winter, like January or something like that. And I'm like, <laughs> it's okay, time I'll, to come to Nebraska. <laughs> right. Yeah. From Wisconsin. So like, okay, snow to snow, but I have some friends out there. Let's, let's go do this beach body thing and see what this is all about this training. So I drove eight hours. Um, overnight, and one of our friends, Anne, um, was kind enough to uh, let me stay at her house so I can afford it, right? So I didn't have to pay for a hotel room or anything like that. She was able to put me up for that night. So I drove in Friday. Um, it was a half day at school. I took that afternoon, drove to Nebraska, had dinner with them, stayed at their house. Um, I didn't work out in the morning because I had a rest day. I remember that. And then we went to the training. The training went from like 8 a.m. to 3. Okay, so that's a Saturday training. I met you. I got inspired from you, the stories and the business training, and I learned a ton of there. And then I left at three o'clock, 3.15, drove the eight hours to get back home because I had to play for church. I'm a church musician that morning. So like I stepped outside my comfort zone. I went to something by myself, first of all, um, with this group of like 30 some people for this training, which is awesome and met people and learned things. And then you know, priorities in life means you have to make those sacrifices. So then I drove back on lots of coffee and um, <laughs> made it back safe and sound. So it's take that leap of faith. That's, that's all I can say. I think that's going to be the theme of our show is that take that leap of faith. <laughs> that sounds good to me. <laughs> So 
so uh, we'll, we'll get back to your book here. You, you mentioned the five principles and, and you even mentioned what, um, well, like the, the categories that they are. Um, and are those the five principles directly that, that you're talking about or that you talk about in the book? No, we have uh, five principles that we teach, and these are principles I've taught in in business. These are principles I've taught in church. These are principles I've taught in, uh, you know, growing up, uh, you know, throughout my entire life, really, with with people. And so um, we call them the ultimate success formula. And the five principles are this. Number one, if you want to be successful in your life in specific areas, you have to, number one, set clear priorities. And what I mean by that is this, and uh, you know, we're at the beginning of a new year here. It's the beginning of 2020 and we always hear about new year's resolutions and people talk about goals. Um, you know, goals, the reality about goals is some people can leave them or take them or leave them, right? They're like right. new year's resolutions and they're for a lot of people, goals that are set are, are kind of things that they wish they could get done. Some people will achieve them. Not very many will. Um, mm -hmm. But the reason why we say set clear priorities is this. The dictionary defines a priority as something that is vital that must get achieved first to make a difference in your life. So a priority is something that has to get done for your life to get to where you want it to go. So we want people, number one, to set clear priorities. Once you've got a priority set, number two, then the second principle is you've got to find a proven plan to achieve that priorities. Mm -hmm. So say, for instance, if you want to get out of debt and get on a budget and take care of your finances, um, you've got to find a plan that helps you get there. But here's the key word in our second principle. You have to find a proven plan. I don't believe going out there. I, I'm not, I don't like wasting my life. You know, I just turned 50, you know, I think I'm getting older, but I don't have time to waste. You know what I'm saying? And there are, there's nothing new under the sun. So if there's something that you need to take care of in your life, there is a plan out there that's been proven to, to work. So find that plan first. So once you find a proven plan, then what do you have to do? You have to implement it, right? So our third principle is one of the toughest things that people have to do is master persistence. You've got to be consistent in the process. You have to endure through the process. Um, success takes a long time. It doesn't happen overnight. And so if it's something that's important in your life, you have to learn how to master persistence. Then the last two principles are what we call the multipliers. And what the multipliers are are this. Uh, these are two principles that I learned later on in life that I wish I'd learned earlier because if I'd had, I'd had far greater success far faster. Um, and the, the, the first one is this, um, the power of regular evaluation. Evaluate where you are with your proven plan, your, either your progress or lack of progress. And if you can evaluate on a regular basis and be honest with yourself, then you know where you're at and you can keep moving forward from that point on. And then the second multiplier is tapping, this is, and this is probably one of the most powerful chapters in my book, is tapping into the power of having a success partner. I have learned over the years that having somebody who's there, who knows what your passion is, knows what you're trying to achieve, who's there to cheer you on, who's there to pick you up when you have a bad day, um, but that they're to help walk you across the finish line mm -hmm. is one of the most powerful principles that you can implement in your life. A lot of people want to do life alone. The reality is we're not designed to do life alone. And if you can learn how to get a success partner, whatever form that looks like, it could be one person, you and I meeting like this on a weekly basis, or it could be in a group of people right. uh, who are trying to achieve one specific goal or maybe a life you know, transformation, whatever it might be. Um, when you can tap into implementing that in your life, you're going to have far greater success. I've been part of mastermind groups for years. I've led them for years. I've had, I've got a success partner now that we've been meeting for over 10 years together. We meet every Thursday, usually for two or three hours. We know each other's life inside right. and out. We've laughed together, cried together, challenged each other, put you, we don't let, we don't let each other off the hook. Right. Um, she knows what I want to achieve. I know what she wants to achieve. And so we're challenging each other to live the best life that we can live. So um, that's the fifth principle. Um, and uh, I just think it's probably one of the most powerful when you learn how to implement your life. So those are the principles that we teach. And what we do then is we say, all right, here's the, here's the success formula. Now let's look at the, very, the various areas of your life that we know majority of people struggle with. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to start implementing those principles. So those areas are the ones we identified, right? Money, people, faith, work, health, and your hopes and dreams. And right. so the book takes you chapter by chapter. We have action steps. We've got worksheets that you work through and they guide you through. And this really is just a life. It's a lifelong process. It's, it's, uh, I, I was fortunate enough. My goodness. 
I'd want to say for 25 years ago, I was fortunate enough to have uh, a guy in my life who really sat me down and walked me through um, really kind of a, a kind of a same format of this, of identifying what are your priorities and how are you going to achieve them and mentored me through that process. And over the years, I've just developed it, refined it. And it's something that I do on a regular basis. And if you want to achieve great things in your life, you've, you know, you've got to be intentional. And this is a great tool to be intentional. Like you said earlier, it's a, we, we tell people it's our roadmap. It's a, it's a proven roadmap to right. success. And they're godly principles. They're principles that have been around for thousands of years. So they're even proven. <laughs> so, right. Uh, we didn't just pull them out of the air. These are ones that obviously have worked for me for thousands of people that I've taught and they've been around for a long time. So there, kind of- there, there's so many things in there that I could just, I'd love to chat about and kind of go a little bit deeper on um, just be within those five. And, and one part, one thing that doesn't even apply to those five or directly apply to it is you said, nothing's new. Like all this stuff has been done before it's been said before and you know let's be perfectly honest anything that you or i say or anyone else has said or probably will say has been said before in some way shape or form and has been done for the most part one way in one way shape or form so i love the fact that this plan has already been done it's been proven throughout the ages not just the past year and a half from from you although you put your your own twist on it your own flair on it right like i put my own flair on, on the things that i do music wise or or encouragement or whatever just like uh you listening to this like you put your own flair on things but the principles the main point has been there for years and i think and we can get all philosophical and, and talk about this is could be in any part of life, right? It's right. so many things are there. Um, I, it's hilarious. I, I think um, that, that we're having this uh, interview, especially now. So this podcast or this show, I should say is coming out after um, the one that I started in the new year, right? It's coming out late January here of uh, 2020. And the one right before this is uh, it's setting and crushing your goals. And I lay people, uh, I lay out how I personally go through my goals and how I set them up for the year because I, I'm not a huge resolution person because I think that's more of a weak word. Um, for me, personally, goals work really well. Um, and then we've talked about like, hey, set your goal, figure out your why. How, why do you want to achieve that goal? Does it relate to you and your belief system? Does that fit? And then your tasks, um, which is your your plan essentially, and then you lay that out, um, and then how to implement it a little bit, and um, reviewing them constantly. Am I doing this right? Do I need to adjust? Do I need to change? And then having an accountability partner uh, is in there. Just a couple different words uh, used there, and I think it's interesting. And I remember when I read your book, I was surprised you used the word priorities instead of goals, and I think that's a great way to look at it. And it's it's verbiage i mean if you if we just want to be frank about it it's just the word you are using for it but it has a more pungent sound and that's probably not the right word for it but it has that factor saying it's more important this is a priority to me this is something that i deem worthy enough as opposed to just a goal well, if i don't reach a goal right uh, goals can be especially as you said for some people uh, like a resolution or like no nope, okay i don't care if i meet that goal or not it's just a goal oh, i missed another goal okay whatever as opposed <laughs> to a priority if you miss a priority mm, that's something that hits uh, your heart more it hits at home that much more deeper so i like the fact you call them priorities i might have to change uh, my mindset and well, ideas no, about it. No. Well, don't, don't take that because here's the thing. It all, around, it all revolves right around the, um, the environment that it's in. So the environment you lay out, you're not just saying, all right, we're going to, I want you to go out there and go out there and get your goals for the year. Right. You're out there saying, no, you're going to set goals and here's how to get there. That's a lot different, right? Than this whole New Year's resolution. Well, I want to lose 20 pounds or I want to get out of debt. And then it just sits there. There's no plan behind it. There's no system behind it. There's no roadmap. And that's where a lot of people, I think, fall in the process. And so don't, no, yeah, no, you're great, man. Don't change what you're doing. Don't change at all what you're doing. You got it nailed. Well, I like the fact that, that we each have the same kind of system with it. Just, again, different words for it. Um, like your priorities, goals, okay? And then the plan and the fact that, you know, I say tasks, like you need to come up with the tasks that, that it's essentially the stepping stones to get to that goal, whatever it is. Um, the goal I set on the show is I'm going to do 100 push-ups straight. My goal is to do 100 push-ups straight by June. 
Um, I've never been able to do it. One and two once, one year couldn't quite make it. I got to like 92 um, was my highest straight and just a random fitness goal. So um, that I threw out on the show and I'm like, okay, here's my steps to do it. So I laid out, you know, I'm going to do so many pushups. I should be able to do so many pushups straight by this month or this date and just to see. And then those are my benchmarks where I check in and reevaluate um, and then implementing it, right? You need to be consistent. You, um, We did a podcast or a Jones and Four show with Ashton Chapman, who talked about um, insist to persist, right? You have to insist to yourself and push to persist when times get tough, because life's going to be hard. Life's going to be tough at times, right? Life tightens and loosens. Uh, life is constantly tightening and loosening. It's a big cycle. And the tightening part is hard and it's frustrating at times, but know that when that happens in your life, that the loosening is going to come. And when that loosening happens and expands or whatever you want to think of, it's going to be amazing. And that's when you can take it in and, and life grows and you grow as a person um, even more, right? And you can see so much more of life expands. Again, philosophical. But um, <laughs> it, it's just, I like it. It, it's one way to, to think about it. And, you know, life gets hard, but you got to keep pushing through. Don't let it stop you. You're going to get knocked down, get up, kick the dust off you, right? Wipe it off and keep going. Um, and then the review aspect of it, you know, constantly looking back and making sure that, yep, I'm on the right track for doing this. Oh, maybe I need to change it. Maybe I need to reevaluate my timeline that I set for this or, or whatever it is. But, but you're reviewing it. You're looking back on it. You're not just leaving it. Hey, I want to lose 20 pounds uh, January 1st. And then December 30th comes around and like, oh crap, that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> How can I lose 20 pounds in a day? Time to get the flu. But you know, like you want to do <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. I I lost five pounds over Christmas break by being sick one day. I don't suggest it. Not no fun. <laughs> um, so a success partner is is pretty incredible. I know when I ha was in a mastermind group uh, myself that it really kick started me and helped me focus that much more. And that's one where I created the OT drill that my workout program um, was through that mastermind because we were so focused on helping each other reach our goals and potential that it just drove me to do that. And now working with Pam, my friend on our speaking business, uh, we're, we're accountability partners and su success partners for each other in the sense that we keep pushing each other to be like, okay, what did you do this week? How's it going for you? Um, what are you, what are your goals now for this? What are your priorities or what, what, what are your hopes and how are you going to do that? And then making sure that they follow through with steps or, helping them check in really it's like an accountability are you checking in for us is huge how do you suggest people so we talked about this let's they listen to the show they listen to you they they got their priorities their goals they got their plan they're implementing it and they're reviewing it but as you said people like doing this stuff alone they we we seem to always want to climb up as uh everyone in general, but especially men, uh, we like to clam up when it comes to this stuff and just keep it uh, close to our heart, right? And these goals don't have to be fitness related. They could be life related, right? You talk about those different aspects. And when it gets personal, when those goals get really personal for you about your relationship, we, we all clam up uh, generally and really want to hold them close. How, how do we find a success partner, an accountability partner, or someone that we could trust and open up to? Because that's, that's scary. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, you know, um, you know, we're, we're men, you and I are guys and last time I checked, last time I checked. And so, uh, you know, I, I think about, you know, you talk about the willingness to open up and I'm, I'm sure you got men and women, you know, across the age, uh, uh range on your, you know, listening mm -hmm. and, but specifically talking to guys, um, you know, uh, I opened up the book with, with the worst fight that Tammy and I had had in our marriage. And, uh, that opened up this whole story about what it, you know, I had gotten my eye off the prize. I had, I had lost focus on my priority of my relationship with Tammy. And so, um, with a lot of kicking, you know, Tammy, not necessarily ta Tammy dragging me, but being encouraged by Tammy and my success partner of, I really need, we need, really need to do counseling. So we got counseling, we had a great counselor. Um, I tell you what, our marriage has been awesome for the last, I don't know, seven, eight, I mean, the best it's ever been. That's but awesome. when we got on the good side of the counseling, our counselor said this, Doug, when you go out to have coffee with men from now on guys and they say, Hey, how you doing? Um, let them know what's going on. Instead of just saying, ah, things are going good. Just let them know what's going on. So I, I went out with guys and the, the first 10 guys 
Spencer, the first team guy said, Hey, how you doing? I said, I'm doing good now, but Tammy and I really struggled in our relationship over the last several years. We got some great counseling. We're doing the best we've ever done. Spencer, the first team guy said, you're going through that. We're going through that right now. I thought I was all alone and I didn't know what, I don't know what to do. Wow. That's incredible. Alone. It goes back to the point of the only way you can start to really um, work on those things that are vital in your life is you have to be real with yourself. You have to be willing to assess your situation and then you have to be willing to open up. You have to uh, with somebody. And the only way that you can start a success partner relationship is when you get to a point where you can feel comfortable with saying, listen, um, you know, here's who I am. Here's what I'm trying to achieve. And maybe you and I could be a good fit to really hold each other accountable to get that done if we're on the same page with that. So, um, so going specifically to your question in the book, I address three things. People mm -hmm. ask me about success partners. Number one, why do I need a success partner? And I think we've talked about that a little bit here. Right. It's really important. The reason why you need one is because there's a lot of benefit to having somebody walking or somebody's, right? It could be a group of people walking alongside you. Maybe you're focused on one type of goal. Maybe you're focused on a, a several goals at once, but you're focused on working through it together and you're committed to each other. Okay. So there's a lot of benefit to that. Number two is um, how do I find a success partner? So I think this is probably the one I want to talk about uh, most. We can talk about the third one here in a second too, but how do I find one? You know, some, you know, so a lot of times people say, well, I'll just have my spouse be my success partner. I'll say, no, that's probably not the best situation. Say, so maybe my best friend. Well, maybe, but that may not be a good situation either. Here's why I say that. You don't want somebody to just tell you, good job, way to go, and kind of blow fluff in your, in your mind. Right. Say, hey, you're doing a great job. Keep it up. That's what Tammy did to me. She's like, keep going. But tell me the truth, though. I want to know the truth. Am I screwing up? Do I need something different? You need somebody who's willing to be raw with you. You need somebody who's willing to be transparent with you right. uh, in a healthy way, all right, in a healthy way. And so there's a lot of different, you know, people say, well, how do I go about this process? Well, um, number one, look at people around you that you already know that may be in a situation where you want to be one day. Maybe it's somebody with their health and fitness that has really, at least you think they've got it really under control and you've been following for a while. You know, approach them and say, listen, I've, you know, I'm in the process of, you know, wanting to get healthy and fit myself. I've noticed that you're, you're, you're really healthy and fit. And I want to learn from somebody and be held accountable by somebody who really knows what they're doing. And you ask them for that. Um, so that'd be one area, maybe people you already know in your sphere of influence. And you just simply ask them and tell them what you're doing. I walk through this in the book, you know, tell them exactly what you're, what you're doing, what your plans are, and ask them if they would consider meeting with you on a regular basis to help you walk through that process. You give them some time to think about it, and then you approach them and, and ask them for their answer. Pretty simple, uh, but it's hard. <laughs> simple to do, hard to do. Um, so that would be one area. One, another area is what about people that are older than you? You know, some of the best people that have taught me in my life have been people who have been older than me that I've learned from. And I think our, gener I think our society in general has really lost sight of our elders, mm -hmm. you know, um, in a lot of different col other cultures out there, the elders are esteemed. They are like the, you know, they are the people to go to. They are the resource for wisdom. They are the, you know, people to follow and, and guidelines. I think in our culture today, we've lo really lost sight of the value that the elders in our generation can provide for us. And so that we, you know, they're like, well, I'm just going to go retire. I reached 65. I'm done. I'm going to go play golf on the golf course and the way they go, you know, but the reality is even people, and I've worked with with people in their 60s and 70s, um, 80s, my parents as well, um, they, they still feel like they have value to add to people around them, but they feel like they're not, you know, people don't want that added. To they're them. not valued, right? They want to yeah, add but, value, but they're not valued. Right. And so, and so, um, so you know, it's, so there's this kind of this catch 22. I tell people this, go for it. Talk to those people. Ask them to be involved in your life. You would be shocked at their response. They will love it. I had one guy who um, I remember when I was plateauing in my business several years ago, and I was really kind of just frustrated. I wanted to keep growing. You know, I've been growing the business, and I was at a plateau point, and I had gotten to be friends with this guy who had owned a multi-million dollar business and sold it and was extremely successful his entire career, retired out in Seattle, and uh, 
I just reached out to him. We had gotten to know each other uh, through a couple of conferences that we had been to. And finally, I just reached out to him and said, hey, would you be, here's where I'm at in my business. Would you be willing to kind of maybe give me some insight? And he's like, oh my goodness, Doug, absolutely. <laughs> so we met for a long time. You know, we'd meet uh, through email. We'd meet on, on video conference and phone calls. And then I was out in Oregon to meet my folks. And he says, Doug, while you're out here, why don't you just come up for the weekend? Come up to our place. And uh, I'll, I'll, you know, put, I'll give you some more principles that I learned in my business. Oh my goodness, Spencer. <laughs> I went to see my folks and then I drove up there, had the weekend to spend with, with him and his wife. Right. He had, he had a whole packet <laughs> of information and outlines of what he had taught his people in his business. Oh my gosh. Decades of wow. how he had success. Walked me through that whole process, gave me some insights in my business, some things I could do. And I, he loved every second. We're great friends to this day. Now, here's the cool thing. He's writing his book. He just is finishing up his book. Yeah. He has turned around and come to me asking me from my experience. Wow. Some insight in regards to getting it published, what he should do, where he should go. So the circle has come full. Um, but I say all that to say this. I think a lot of times we lose sight that our elder generation is a great resource to look for, for somebody who could be a success partner in our life. And then it uh, could be other, you know, then other areas you can find is maybe other organizations you're in, maybe, um, um, uh, you know, uh, like you, you talk about Beachbody, Beachbody, great place for you because of your setting and what you're interested in to find right. people that will hold you accountable in specific areas. So, um, and then the biggest thing is what I call for in the book is go for the ask, right? That's ASK, right. go for the ask. You'll never know unless you ask. Um, and then once you have a success partner, then the third thing that we teach is what do we do? And so I think in that process of what do you do is you got to know exactly what the purpose of your meetings are going to be. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to know exactly um, the consistency of those meetings and when they're going to be, who's going to be in charge of making sure that they get done and, uh, and make sure that they stay on task and that they're focused. That's why good best friends a lot of times don't work really well because you'll get together and you'll start talking about one thing that's important. The next thing you know, you're like off golfing. Or you're off, you know, you know, you know, who knows what you're doing. You're talking about something else and you're not really staying focused to um, the purpose of why you're together. So um, that's kind of a little bit about what we talk about in the book and why success partners are important. But I tell you what, if you're listening to this, um, I think one of the biggest takeaways you can take away is, is seek that process out. It's not easy. It's not, uh, um, you know, it might be awkward at first, but I'm telling you what. Once you can get a good success partner and get in a groove, I'm telling you, you're going to, you're going to experience things that you would never have experienced before in your life. And you've experienced that Spencer. I mean, you know what that's like. I was going to just comment on that, that you're right. Once you get that accountability partner and that mastermind group or whatever that is, that looks like for you, it it's amazing. And I, I was shocked. Like I've heard about these mastermind groups and these accountability partners for a number of years, but I was too afraid to join one or, or whatever. And we ended up, or it wasn't a paid group or anything like that. Um, just a couple of us got together to hold each other accountable. And wow, the energy in that group was incredible for for everyone involved and uh, what it allowed me to do and focus on and encourage me to do. And hopefully I was able to help them. I know I was able to help them with their things as well, that it's, it's incredible. Uh, so yeah, get, if you get a chance, go for the ask, go get an accountability partner, a success partner, a mastermind group, something that will help you go after your priorities, your goals in life so that you can, you can achieve those things and keep becoming, uh, keep living your best life, really, yep. and being the best you can be. Um, I want to rewind just a little bit here and go back to two things. Um, one thing is you talked about our elders, right? My um, for a number of years, uh, I did not know my grandparents that much. Just family situations, whatever. Um, I did not know my uh, parent or my mom's parents all mm -hmm. that well. Um, and then a little bit before I got married, uh, we started chatting again and I got to know them, uh, quite well. My grandma passed away a couple of years after that. And then my grandpa, uh, was living up in the area and my other, my two older brothers have been living different parts of the country or just not nearly as close as I have been to them, uh, physically location. And so I was one who was visiting him and, uh, it, you know, started off monthly visits or whatever, just saying hi and chatting for half hour, hour. And then it became to every other week. And then it became every week visits where we went out to dinner and we chatted and um, awesome. it, was, it was incredible. And we were at, he was at a nursing home um, 
facility there and just to meet the people that he was uh, hanging out with or chatting with and getting to talk to them about what I'm doing and, and their life experiences. There was a guy who was 90 some years old who wrote his first book about his experiences in the war and all that and just how he did it and how that happened to be and just because you know, we were talking and they have experiences. Our elders have so many things to share because they've lived through it. Think of all the things you're living through right now and that you want to pass on. There's no reason or exception that people who are older than you or an elder generation, um, don't, they, they've lived life. They've had experiences. Mm -hmm. They're still living life. They want to share and can help you uh, and guide you. Even, heck, even uh, my church choir members, um, we were talking um, after rehearsal one day about traveling and my wife Katie and I love to travel and and see different things and they were suggesting oh yeah might we go here and uh, offer these suggestions of just travel locations but one person said you know my dad told me he wish he now this is a different life thing but um, said I wish I didn't wait to travel until I was retired. I wish I did it when mm -hmm. I was younger so I could enjoy the hiking more or do these things. Not that I couldn't physically do all of them, but I'm limited now when before I, I wouldn't have been. So it's just little mm -hmm. pieces of advice, yeah. whether you agree with that personally or not, but it's something to think about. And what, what they say has, has meaning, has something for you to think about, contemplate, agree, disagree on, or whatever. But it's that advice, right? Same advice that you you want to give people and you want to help people with. They offer the same thing. Yep. Yep. That's great. I love that. Um, the other thing um, that I want to go back to is you said it's hard. It's scary. Um, we might not say it's scary, but it's hard to go for that ask, right? To, yep. to, uh, be open to be frank with uh, people, especially guys. And it, it loops back to the beginning of our conversation. You go for that leap of faith, right? Yeah. You have to take that leap of faith, get out of your comfort zone to do that because, you know, it's much more comfortable to stay uh, by yourself and, and, oh, yep, I got my goals or my priorities written down here. I got all the stuff written down. Yay, I can do this. Yay. But I don't want to ask someone for it. I'm scared to ask someone. But no. Get outside your comfort zone, take that leap of faith, and know that there's going to be people there to support you and help you. Now, is everyone going to do it? No. And that's okay, right? That's their life. That's how that's going. It's just not meant to be at that time. But more likely than not, you'll find people who are willing to help you. And then, like in your process, you review it. You know, in our mastermind group that I had, that I was part of, we reviewed it every um, three months, right? We yes. did it for six months. We reviewed it every three months. We met monthly. So, you know, every third meeting, we just look back on it and say, Hey, how's this going for us? Um, is this working? Do we need to change things? Do we need to yep. change our approach? What do you think? Um, and, and ended up being after six months, we decided, Hey, you know, we're doing pretty good with this, but it's just not jiving. You know, we're not getting quite the same energy off this. Let's do, let's, let's end it now. And then let's, uh, restart it again at another time or, or get more people or, you know, adjust it. So we, you take that time to evaluate what's going on in your group, in your life, and your accountability partner and say, is this still working? How is this going? What do we need to change and adjust? And it's finding someone that's going to be honest with you, you know, uh, and be frank, not mean, but just right. very raw, as a, as right. a perfect word you said, to, to make that happen. Yeah. So uh, the couple of questions I, I had when I was thinking about our interview, we, we've really kind of approached so many of them. and and obliterated them really like you know <laughs> what steps can people do to live their best life well he laid it out for you right like the five principles like boom there you go that's how you can do it um so uh one more question before because we're coming up on our, our time here um one question i have for you is how and where can people find inspiration to live their best life now this is it's a big broad question <laughs> And I want to see where you take this one. So, so how and or where can people find inspiration to live their best life? Oh, Spencer, that's <laughs> curveball at the end. We could we could be here forever. <laughs> uh, you know, I <laughs> list them all up. Let's list up. We can go have, down the road. The pod, let's do the longest podcast ever. Yes, like perfect. The Guinness World Record, and we'll. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, guys, you're ready for a treat. Grab a cup of coffee. I got mine. We're set to go. <laughs> you thought your eight-hour ride back here to Lincoln and back was long. <laughs> you, right? you just wait. Cross um, country. Well, here we go. <laughs> All right. Well, let me let me just kind of let me just kind of let me let me try to take a stab at this. I think number one is this. I think number one is, and I and you might think it's overused nowadays or whatever. I I don't. I think anyway. I think it's it's gratitude. It's it's taking the time to um, to really evaluate what's what you have in life and be thankful for that. I think once you understand what you have in your life, I think pers- your perspective changes pretty quick. I think a lot of times we think, um, you know, uh, you know, life stinks or, you know, we're struggling or we don't want what, you know, we're not making a difference. And it's because we're not taking the time to really be grateful for what we currently have. And so I think inspiration comes from that because once you start out, at least for me, once I start out my day with a, with a heart that's full of gratitude and thinking about that, then that inspires me to realize um, what my purpose is in life and what I'm set out to do. And whether it's an issue I'm trying to deal with, or it's something I'm trying to be proactive with to grow. I know that if I know at the heart of what I'm grateful for and how I'm making a difference, that can totally change your, you know, trajectory of how you deal with it. So I think gratitude, you know, that may come out of left field for you, but I think it's really important. I think we need to be grateful for that. It was, let me see if I've got, oh my goodness, I got a quote. It was, um, Oh my goodness. I wish I could remember. Oh, um, I'm glad it's not just me who struggles with that. No, I, it's a, it's, Oh, and I used to have it printed off in front of me. Well, uh, as I'm thinking about it, I'll tell you real quick that that, yes, the, the gratefulness does not come out of left field for me at all, because that's one thing I talk about in, in my groups and my challenge groups that I have, especially my positivity challenge groups. Um, one of the first things we do, actually the first day, the first challenge that I have is, to write down three things you are grateful for. I, I stole it from the five minute journal. And I found that when I started doing that every morning when I wake up, as I'm brushing my teeth, I'm thinking through what are the three things I'm grateful for that I write them down. And just starting off my day of thinking, what am I grateful for? What am I happy for? What am I blessed to have in my life? That it it changes your mindset more to positivity, but you're looking at the things and you realize how lucky and blessed you are to mm-hmm. have all those things in your life that it, it kicks off your day so much better. But then, as you said, it can provide that inspiration for you to continue to go after your priorities and goals and, and life. Well, what I, yeah. And, that, and what I was going to say is this, the only way you get to that point, the only way you get to a point where you're taking time to be grateful is you've got to be quiet. We've always heard, you know, I, I heard growing up, have your quiet time. But the reality is there's not any quiet time. Usually it revolves around reading or praying or studying or, and nowadays with the, with social media, like my phone, you know, your phone's with you all the time and, and people are always bombarded with things. And I was at a conference this past year in see, October of 2019. And uh, one of the biggest things I got out of this conference it's hilarious. It was just simply a quote. And I talked to the guy who, who had actually shared it and he had just kind of thrown it in. It wasn't an intentional, real intentional part of his talk, but it had the most profound impact for me. And it was a quote by Pascal. Okay. And it says this, all men's miseries derive from not being able to sit in a quiet room alone. Now think about that for a second. Here's a guy who lived in the, uh, I don't know what it was, 1700s, 1600s, a long time ago, all right? Didn't have a cell phone, didn't have a computer. What did he have to distract him? A horse and a quill and a piece <laughs> of paper and kids running around? I mean, you know what I'm saying? And this guy's still saying, you know, one of the key things is to be able to sit down and just be quiet. And I think inspiration comes from that. Here's, here, now, here's why it hit me so hard, because I know I don't take that time to do it. But, but I, and I know a lot of people tell me where they get their best ideas from in the shower. And what are like, you in the shower at that time? You know, you're thinking, why, it's your quiet. Why is it? There's nothing to distract you. It's right? one of the only times during my day where it's just me and me. Huh. And so it hit me really hard to say, all right, this is, has to be a, this has to be a principle and an activity that I intentionally apply in my life so that I can move forward in a powerful way. And here's the cool thing that's happened over the last several months. 
I spend time in the morning with a piece of paper and a pen and that's it. No, no agenda, no nothing. And I sit there, you just sit there. And the craziest thing, some of the craziest ideas, thoughts, things that need to be done, people I need to be praying for, thinking about action steps I need to take will come. And that I believe you talk about inspiration. Yep. That is a source of inspiration, right? It's a directive of saying, all right, I want to be open to using my life to powerfully impact those around me, mm -hmm. allow myself to be quiet and see what happens. And so that really impacted me this last year. So you know, that would be, you know, I just, I just think it's, uh, there, and there's a lot of other areas you can go for inspiration. I think another one is looking at people who are successful and really be willing to not only learn about them, but maybe to actually approach them. And to say, all right, how are you doing these things? Right. And how are you being successful in these areas? They can inspire you to say, all right, here's where I've gone. That's why I love, I love watching um, documentaries. I love it because it's a source of inspiration of people who have been in one situation in life. And usually they have you know, overcome the odds or usually they have um, come up with a great idea or they've had a great talent and they've, they've uh, honed in on it. So it's to be a great success, you know, whatever it might be. I love great documentaries that really highlight people because from that becomes the inspiration, right? That's why we love movies. They right. tell stories about the odds of people overcoming something. Well, it's because you want to desire, you want to get that inspiration. You want that desire for them. And you want, because you want that in your life, Exactly. you know? And so, um, but anyway, there you go. That, that is a phenomenal answer uh, for, for that question, especially the question out of left field like that. And you're, you're right. Our life is a narrative. We love hearing narratives. We love hearing those stories. Um, uh, and that's a business training uh, technique, if you want to call it that, but it's as ages old as time, that storytelling. It's yep. how we relay messages and meaning and our conversation here. We were telling stories yep. so much of the time. <laughs> and... I, what I really love about what you what you mentioned, especially with that question, is you can look for inspiration in all those great ways, right? Movies and uh, people who have accomplished what you would like to accomplish or you're inspired by what they accomplished, which are great. And those are, that's a question, uh, answers, I should say, to that question that I think uh, a lot of people would just give off, off cuff um, and they're great answers because it's true, we can find inspiration. But I truly love the fact that you came out of left field in a sense and, and said different things like gratefulness. Like what gives you inspiration? Being grateful. Like that for me, I'll be honest, I never would have thought of that for that, for that question because I, I just, my mind wouldn't have been there, but thinking about it, that's, that's so true. And then quiet time, finding that peace and that quiet time to, to reflect, to think, to let your mind wander is it can be, and you can find inspiration in that, in those moments, and that's that's huge. And I think that's what people need to hear because we hear of how to be inspired and who our idols should be, and you know they're blasted through social media and media in general. It's like, oh, this person, this this Olympic athlete, which is great and phenomenal. And yeah, we should uh, be inspired by most of them, not necessarily all, but most of them, but. There's other things that are closer to home that you can be inspired by that are much more personal than a person who wins five gold medals. They're inspiring and they're incredible. I'm not taking anything less than that, you know, or saying anything less about it. But you can find inspiration in so many other places. You can find it in your shower, in your quiet time. You know? <laughs> Never thought you were going to say that today, did you? <laughs> wow, I did not. I, I'm not sure that really should have came out of my mouth, but it did. So, oh, well, it's in the pot. In the show. So, um, well, Doug, thank you so much for being on the Jones of Force. I really, really appreciate you being here. Where can people find out more about you and get their hands on your book? And what, what, where can they find you? Sure. Simple. You can go to oneshotonelife.com and you can, get all, you can learn about our resources, things we're coming out with. And there's one thing that you could do on the site. We've got a theme song okay. that is the inspiration for actually our title of the book and what we're doing as a business called One Shot, One Life. And um, I'll give you a quick little story of that. And you can go there and you can actually download it for free. Brian Olson, he used to be, um, used to tour with a, a Christian band called the, the Newsboys back in their heyday, he played the guitar and background song for them, has his own band called Voda. And so he was writing a new album for that, used our lake house property. He had a producer coming in from Nashville 
uh, used our lake house property to actually record the core of the album. And then he would send me demos. And this was right at the time when I started writing the book. And so I was sitting at the lake house where I was writing my book and he'd send me a demo one night and he said, Hey, listen to this. What do you think? And I played it and I went, Oh my goodness. It was called one shot, one life. And it was exactly my passion and, and purpose for what we're writing the book for. So I said, Bri, can I, can we use this? Can we use the name? It's like, absolutely. So you can go to the website, a little background story of the song, download the theme song for free. And then, like I said, everything uh, resource wise that we have available is there at one shot, one life.com. Oh, that's such a cool story. Again, telling stories, but such a cool story that uh, inspired you to give that name to the book and have everything line up. Um, Thank you again for being here. And for everyone out there listening, I hope that you take the steps that he suggested. Go get One Shot, One Life. Check out that book. Let it be your roadmap for Mm -hmm. success so you can live your best life. You can chase your passions to the max right? Use the, the show last, uh, our last show about goal setting and how to achieve it. Combine it with yep. how Doug uh, talks about the priorities and planning and accountability partners. Combine these two because they're out there already. You've heard it probably before, but now you're hearing from two different ways, two different styles, and that will mesh with you and help you achieve your goals. So go check it out. Go to oneshotonelife.com and if you like this show, make sure you like it, right? Uh, give us a thumbs up on YouTube if you're watching it there. Drop comments in there. Subscribe to the show on iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, all that good stuff. And let us know. And heck, if you like what you heard on this show, this one, share it up. Because the best thing you can do for us besides writing review and subscribing is honestly get it in more people's hands. Let them know about it. Let Help them live their best life and know the, the five principles and about Doug and all the things he's doing so we can help inspire them to live their best life. Then you can help out others as well. So Doug, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. I can't wait to see you again in person, hopefully sooner rather than later. And congratulations again on your book release. And I hope that your new business with One Shot One Life, well, business that you're growing really expands for you and is everything you could dream of and more. Thanks so much, Spencer. It was fun and an honor. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Until next time, folks, we will catch you all later. 